Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana, and I'm in my Beehive studio this morning. And if you are joining me from YouTube, um, please know that this is not live from YouTube, but I love seeing your comments and questions. So uh, please feel free to comment down below. Just know that I'm not live. If, I'm definitely not live if I'm on uh, YouTube. I load up my videos to YouTube after I've done a Facebook Live. Um, if you are on Facebook and you are uh, watching me on at 10, 10 a.m. on Tuesday, December 11th, then I am live. So welcome. And uh, today is Casing Tuesday and I do a Facebook Live every Tuesday morning. And um, what Casing Tuesday is about it's about copying a card out of one of our Stampin' Up! catalogs. Um, casing stands for copy and share everything. And um, so basically what we do is we make over a card out of the catalog. And this does a couple of things for us. One, it gives us a starting point because sometimes we're like, oh, I wanna make a card and I have no idea where to start. So it gives us a great starting point. Um, other times for myself, I am an experienced stamper. I've been stamping for many years it gives me a chance to try out a different style something that I might not be comfortable with um, all of the people that blog with us have different styles and so when we go to pick cards we all take turns um, so some of the cards aren't my style and it's not like I don't like them it's just that it's not the style I gravitate towards so it's great to try something that is outside of your comfort zone. So that's why I love making over cards in the catalog. The other thing is we have a Facebook group, which is great. And you can find the link to that in the description of this video. Um, it's great because you can look, we all do the same card each week. So you can see all the different ways this card could be made over by um, some of our bloggers. And then you can also share your own version of the card that we are making over on our Facebook group. So we want you to join in as well. Um, so it's a great Thing that that we're all kind of doing together so I hope you will join us and hello everyone who's joining me from far and wide um, thank you for joining me this morning so I'll just tell you about my morning so far it is a frozen morning here um, I, I live in the Boston area and I'm originally from Canada so um, when I sometimes I I'll say temperatures in Fahrenheit and sometimes I'll say them in Celsius on my my little weather app on my phone I actually have all my temperatures in Celsius because I can I grew up in Celsius so I can kind of um, translate the cold better and today it is minus 8 Celsius I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit but it is cold it is below freezing and um, my husband and I, we uh, walk every morning together and I have several layer several down jackets and I have like my micro down, I have my uh, kind of regular weight down and then I have my long jacket, my long, long down jacket. And today I was wearing my long down jacket and it was a little bit chilly out there. There's a little bit of a wind, but uh, I'm hanging in there. I, I will never stop walking. I walk every day. So if it's freezing really, really crappy out, um, then I will go on the treadmill, but I love the fresh air. And and I know when you step out the door, it's like, oh, it's freezing cold. And you're like, why am I going out here? But then afterwards, when I come back, I'm like so refreshed in the morning and I'm like, uh, feel so good. Are any of you guys walkers? Like, do you do that regularly too? It's it's my my uh, my thing. I, I do it every single day. I, I just absolutely love it. So that's a little aside. It is a beautiful sunny day here, but it is freezing cold and our little river out here is uh, starting to freeze over. So anyway, I will turn the camera around and I will show you my frozen river. See out there? I don't know if you can really tell from the camera view. So the the blue, the kind of the light blue that's kind of in front, that um, is the part that's starting to freeze over and the darker part towards the back, that's still kind of open water. We're just starting to, to freeze over. It can freeze over sometimes completely, um, but I've never walked on it. I'm, I'm too cautious. Uh, 
from Canada. I'm like, mm, I don't, I don't trust ice. I don't ever want to fall in. I don't want to be cold. All right. So here is our card for today. We are copying or making over this card right here. It's a very simple card, actually. It's just got kind of a very simple square focal point. Um, and it's got some, um, uh, what do they call this? So it's, it's the little, it's not twine, but it's um, the thread. It's um, it's very tiny and lovely, um, but I can I can't seem to use it for the life of me. I cannot get it to look uh, the way I want it to look, so I'm always frustrated with it. So I'll show you uh, a design that I did that kind of mimics that, and then I'll show you my actual card. Um, show me you my actual card right now, and then I'll show you the other sample a little later. But um, so this is the card that I created um, based on that. And I use the seasonal wreath embossing folder. And I had completely forgotten I had this. So I was cleaning up my craft room um, last week and I came across this embossing folder and I'm like, I could have used this like three months ago, but I bought it in July or June and I didn't need it then and then I forgot about it and so I was like I need to use this embossing folder and it looks fabulous and this card was pretty easy but I want to show you a couple of things that I did with it um, some little tricks and stuff so I want to show you how I did that so let's let's start off let's start off by doing the wreath so we're going to need our big shot and I'm going to use just a regular piece of the regular Whisper White, not the thick one. And here is the embossing folder. Um, it is a thick embossing folder. So um, as you probably already know, for thick embossing folders, our sandwich is a little different. So the key with this, really, because we're not cutting it out, is you want to get it so it's centered. So I just... Uh, I'm just kind of playing with that and making sure it is centered. I know, I, I'm just, basically I'm looking at the edges to make sure there's about the same amount around on all four sides. Okay, so I'm just kind of pinning that down with my thumb so that it stays where it needs to go. I'm using my regular Big Shot platform here. We only need one cutting plate for the thick embossing folder. So I'm putting this right on top of my platform and then I'm using one of my cutting plates. I'm going to put that through, I'm going to run that through. And if you want to, you can also go back over top of it, back and forth. It really doesn't hurt. And then you have this embossed piece. So how do I get the color on here? So I, I kind of want you know it's kind of a nice soft look i didn't want to use anything like markers or anything like that but sponge daubers do such a fabulous job so i decided to use pear pizzazz ink and i have a little sponge dauber and so i'm just going to daub into my ink pad and you don't want to start off really really dark so um, you can either sponge daub off or you can just really start off light and just do a circular motion and just kind of come around and hit those leaves as you come around. Now some of them will end up being darker and that's fine. So just keep going around and hitting all of the leaves. So you come around so you may have to go back and do some but it's okay if you go over um, the the wreath like it it doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect um, if it fades off a little bit past the actual embossing that's fine too I'm just trying to hit most of the leaves to get some of them that might be right here on the side that I might not have quite gotten. So I just want to make sure I hit those. Uh, there's a few right there and maybe right here on the inner. Then I come around and kind of hit the inner part as well. All right. 
So if you see any areas that you want to go back and hit a little bit more. And there is your wreath. It's kind of um, easy peasy. And it's kind of got a nice look because you've got the darker and the lighter and um, you just have one color. I'm not using two different colors. You could use two different colors, but I like the pear pizzazz because it's dark enough, but not so dark that um, you, if you use a darker color, you have to be really careful with this because you don't want it totally to overwhelm your, your, your picture with the dark you have um, a tendency maybe to put too much ink in one area. Pear Pizzazz is a nice soft color for that. So then what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a red bow and I have, there are some red ribbons, but some of them are um, close to being sold out from the holiday catalog. So I wanted to use one that was from the um, annual catalog. Um, I didn't, for this particular card, I didn't really like the reds that we had so I thought I'd make my own red and I did that by using some metallic uh, gold edge ribbon and you just take a scrap piece of paper to protect your surface and I'm going to take my dark real red stamp and blend and you just use the brush tip and you come along and you just brush along um, the ribbon and it pretty much sinks through to the other side see that so you you do about um, a nine in inch eight inch length of ribbon and you need to let it dry for a little bit um, and then once it is dry um, what I do is I just take um, a little tissue it stiffens up after um, it dries and then I just like kind of run it along um, just run it along the tissue because there is a little bit of residual ink that comes off um, so if you just run it along it takes some of that that um, residual ink and then you can tie it into a bow so I already tied mine into a bow earlier so I wouldn't have to wait for it to completely dry um, and then the other thing we're going to need is a card base and this card base is an eight and a half by five and a half piece. So this is a half sheet of cardstock. And then I scored it at the four and a quarter inch mark. And this is the thick whisper white. You're also going to need a piece of gold glimmer paper. I kept the measurements really simple on this one. It's six inches by one inch. So very easy, very easy if you're cutting this up for a class too. Um, and then I'm just going to use my banner triple punch and I'm going to punch both ends of this. It fits so nicely in that little slot. This would be such an easy card to do. Okay, so I think, oh, just one more thing we need to do. Um, I want to stamp a greeting in the center and I'm going to use the Merry Christmas to All stamp set and this stamp set is carrying over so um, you don't have to worry about it selling out. And I'm also going to use my Pear Pizzazz. I'm keeping it very simple today uh, with color schemes. So you only need one ink pad with this. I'm just gonna ink up this greeting. It says, wishing you peace and love all year long. And then you can just, you decide which side you want up. I'm gonna have that side up. And then I'm gonna stamp this a little bit towards the bottom of the wreath because this little bow is gonna come down in here near the bottom. So you don't want to um, you know, cover up your greeting. So I think now I have all the components of everything we need. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna take some tear and tape. And by the way, if you have any questions, just please, please post them along the way. I will get to them right at the end. And good morning to everyone who's joined me. So I'm just going to make sure that this is the top right here and I'm going to turn it over. And what I want to do is put a, a roll, not a roll, a length of tear and tape down the center of my wreath. I'm also going to put one up at the top. I did kind of a bad job. There's some hangover right there. 
I'll fix that in a second. So I'll just put a little bit along the bottom too. Okay. So this one, I can either cut it off or when I go to um, um, take the liner off, I can just roll back that adhesive. So I'm concerned with, first of all, this middle one. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it kind of lines up. I want it to kind of line up with my greeting because I'm going to use it to highlight my greeting. So I'm just removing the middle liner right now, and I'm going to take my uh gold banner and i'm just going to kind of line it up so that it runs behind that okay and press down and then you can take take the liner off and this one i'm just i had a little extra so i just i'm going to roll it back and that way i don't even have to bother with scissors um, and then this one, I have no fingernails right now. It's so dry in my house. All right, both of those liners are off now. And then I can just center this on the front of the card. Okay, and then I'll take a mini glue dot and find the dot and my little bow and I'm gonna stick my oh I'm off camera that's not good um, there's the mini glue dots so you can see them on there I just stuck my knot right on top of one of those and I'm just gonna pull it off and then I can stick it right up top there like that so there is um, the card and I was trying to figure out like, I think this would also look nice with just the plain um, uh, gold ribbon as well. And I was experimenting last night because, like, I really wanted to do, <laughs> I really wanted to do this, this um, gold metallic thread in the background. But I'm just never, ever satisfied with it. I, I've done it on, tried to do it on so many cards. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I just don't. I, I love the look when someone else does it, but when I do it on my card, I feel like I'm scrutinizing it and I feel like it doesn't look good. So anyway, I, I have, I've been wanting to do, show everyone how to do this alternative thread. So I kind of, I don't know what you think about this card. This is my first card that I did last night and um, instead of the banner, so this is the card I did today with the red and the gold and the banner. And this is the one that I did last night and I was like not really that happy with it. But I kind of wanted to show you how I did this crazy gold thread because this isn't the regular gold metallic thread. This is some thread that I pulled out of. I need to get the exact name for that product. It is some gold cording that we had in the annual catalog. Let me pull it up. And show you because I want to show you how to do this because I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to pull it off okay this is called uh, the 1 8 inch cord and I don't know I, I find this cord a little bit difficult to tie if I'm just gonna do a regular bow so it might just look nice like wrapped around something but I was playing with it one day and I realized you can pull it apart this is it this is it gold cord right so I was playing with it and I was like oh you can pull this apart and I kept pulling it apart and more and more and more and it was like it was so much fun um, and I just have never been able to figure out a project to do with it because I don't like the messy look and I know some people could really use this so I'm going to show you how to do this so you just need whatever length of cord that you want so I'm just going to cut like maybe a six inch piece of the cord and I need to bring some light in here. All of a sudden, my sun shine just died, and now I'm left in darkness, and I'm behind a cloud. I don't know. I don't know where all my sunshine went. Okay, that's a little better. So you just start pulling apart the end of your cord, 
And you're going to soon see that there's this white filament piece. Can you see that? It's a white piece. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull on it. It's so much fun. Pull it out. Now, you could use this for something too, right? It kind of that might be kind of beachy. I don't know. But it's it's kind of um, a very silky cord that's on the inside. But there's two of them. So then you can pull those out. Right? So pull, 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 pull. So now you have this one. Now this that's left over, if you want to tie this into a bow, this has a less of um uh, it's less bulky. So you could actually tie this into a bow and I think that would make me happier. But yet I still haven't figured out where I was going to stick this. So then you can just take this and you can start pulling it apart. And you can see it's kind of got this crazy crimped thing going on. So then you can just grab one of them and pull it apart. Just kind of, okay, so you can see it's kind of got this crimped thing going on. And then you grab another one. I don't know. I don't know why this part makes me so excited. It's just kind of fun. And you just start pulling them apart, right? And uh, I think now they're probably all kind of come apart. Let's see. Might, at some point, they probably are no longer twisted into each other, so they'll, they come out a lot easier. I think you get about eight or nine of these and look at how cool that is <laughs> I just love how cool that is but yet I cannot find a way to use it because it makes me too crazy not to have order and the other thing it's like you can maybe do something once and make it look good but how do you show other people how to make it look good again like how do you control it such that you can show and share with other people how to do it easily. And I, I haven't been able to figure that out yet, but I know some of you are gonna love that little trick. And um, you get all of that gold crimped fun thread, which I think is a lot more fun than our gold thread. So there's my little trick with the gold. And then you've got these leftover pieces of cord as well. And they're kind of, um, kind of a vanilla color with maybe a little bit of a gold sheen to them. So I think this would be um, cool to use on a different project. So yeah, that's that's basically how I got this um, background uh, gold crimpy thread growing up, going on. And um, but I just kind of prefer more like the the nice sort of neat banner look. Um, I wish I could. I don't know the card in the catalog. They did such a great job with that gold thread, right? They just kind of have it here and here, and it just works. And when I do it, I think it looks wrong. So it's just one of those things, you know, preference things that, you know, you just, eh, it's, you can't quantify. It's just who you are, and, and um, you have trouble with it. So, yeah, so that's my little tip and trick for the day. I hope you like those cards. And like I said, you could do this with a silver edge metallic or you don't have to color this ribbon at all. I think it will look very beautiful just with the um, uh, the just the just as it is, just with the regular like this this particular ribbon. Um, I think you could do this on this card as well, and I think it would look just as nice. So those are my cards. Let me just scroll down and see if I have any questions. I do not. Okay, so let turn me around. There I am. So I like this layout. I saw a lot of wreaths this morning in the samples, but you don't necessarily have to do this card as a wreath card. It has a nice big area. Like look at my card. You could use this area right here to stamp your, your image. And then you could put a wreath behind it. And then you could, you if you're fine with the gold thread, you could do the gold, the silver thread behind there. Um, I like this layout because it's relatively simple. You've got a big space to work with. So I want to see what you guys come up with. And uh, you can post it on our Facebook group. And you know where to find that in the description of this video. Also, if you are... Um, 
uh, looking for my measurements or you want to know the exact supplies I use, you can go into the uh, description as well and there's a link to my blog post which will have the links to everything that I use today, has a link to my host code. Oh, you know what I didn't show you guys? I'm going to turn the camera around one more time to show you. Just Yes, yes, yes. I brought it all the way over and then I forgot to show you. So yesterday I finished my tutorial and it's like this birthday um, cake tutorial. Isn't that cute? Um, and I used the icing on the cake stamp set. Now this is one of my free with purchase tutorials. So if you um, purchase at least $15, place at least a $15 order in my store, then you can get this tutorial for free and it's a little cake box. So it opens up. And there's chocolate inside so it's kind of a nice little um, gift for um, you know birthday a co-worker a friend you can leave it on their desk so that's kind of fun and I thought to do something like for the um, you know the winter season this is Frosty's hat you know Frosty the snowman so yeah so it's kind of the same deal like you it has the um, it's a box and um, I ate the chocolate that was inside here it was really good chocolate so it was this chocolate between me and my son we, we finished this this off um, sadly but that's that's the problem when I have a new chocolate in the house because I had never tried these before and they're, they're really cool and they're kind of blue so they matched my blue pearl um, and they they were just really good and so now they're gone but I did manage to have them in my house for a week while I was designing my tutorial and getting it ready so I didn't eat them all right away or in, all in one day but they just kind of gradually disappeared one a day and then they were gone but uh, they were they were actually good so they two of these would fit inside the little little hat but um, last night um, yes they kind of met their their untimely demise but anyway this um, both of these um, uh, the hat and the cake are on the same tutorial so um, you just um, if you order you can choose that tutorial or one of my many other fun tutorials so I thought I would um, show that and uh, thank you Mary I'm glad you like my my gold thread fun today I think it it's much more fun for me to pull it apart than it is to use it so kind of the hilarious part about that sometimes oh, the sunshine sometimes for me it's all about like figuring out how to do something that's that's the the fun part in anything for me it's like how do you do it and then like if I can use it then it's even better but I have in my craft room um, if sometimes people ask me how I come up with my designs and they they think that I like constantly like just come up with great design after great design after great design and that is like not true at all I come up with lots of flop designs or things that I think are gonna work and um, they don't and then every once in a while I come up with a good design and that becomes a tutorial um, so uh, for me it's a lot of playing around so if you're in your craft room and you're trying to compare yourself maybe not necessarily to me but to someone else that you think that maybe you admire and you think oh wow she's like so brilliant well just just realize that we are real people back here and um, some of us like me maybe not everyone we do a lot of experimentation and playing around before we come up with something cool I know there's a few people that are probably just just plain brilliant and just come up with great designs all the time but for me it's always about the process so don't ever feel scared about playing around and don't think that after you've made one flop design that that's it, that you're not a good designer, that you're not worthy. Just take it and look at it and go, huh, how can I make it better? Um, or try something else. You know, it's, it's about a process, right? So that's just my little tip for the day. All right, guys. Well, I will be back here definitely next week with another um, Casing Tuesday video. And oh, I'm sorry that someone's late this morning, but guess what? You can go back in and watch my Facebook Live after it finishes. And I will also load it up to YouTube so anyone else in the world that wants to watch it can. And uh, so I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you back here next Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.